happy new year. It's been a while since I posted my last video. It has been way longer than I had intended. I had all of these grand plans for holiday projects to show you, and unfortunately, I just pushed through and did my projects as quickly as possible because I was in a rush and I had a December 25th deadline to get a bunch of stuff done. But I will show you some of the pictures, some pictures of the stuff that I made. But I also finished my mystery quilt along, which I gifted, uh, and I love it so much. So I'll show you a picture of the mystery quilt. And I did make a couple changes to the mystery quilt, but it came out so good, I love it. There's a couple things I wanna talk about today. I wanna talk about some projects that I completed over the winter break. I wanna talk about some upcoming projects that we can do together that I'm really excited about. I haven't totally committed to these yet, but I wanna talk about them and, and see what we think. And I wanna talk a little bit about the channel, but before all of that, I have been over this break in between rushing through all my quilting projects, been reading so many quilt history books. Actually, let me get a couple and I'll show you the ones that I've been reading because I recommend all of them. So all three of these books are pretty thick. I'll tell you what they are. But in reading these books, and I haven't finished any of them, I'm kind of just starting from the beginning and piecing through, and of course I flipped to the pictures first to get a little inspiration. Um, but in looking at these books and reading these books, I have started to think about what my own quilt philosophy is. And I've decided that it's important for me personally to kind of define some aspects of my quilt philosophy because I think it will help me to make better quilts. Now I will say that I also feel like I've been a little bit judgy internally about how my quilt philosophy may differ from other people's quilt philosophy. I always feel and say that, you know, I do it my way, but Anybody else should do it whatever way they want in the way that brings them joy, which is true. But I do feel a little bit like they're doing it wrong. And I will say that now I feel like I can internalize a little bit that just because somebody has a different quilt philosophy doesn't mean they're doing it wrong. Now I'm not talking about technical aspects like, you know, they're pressing the seams open versus to one side, though that is part of the quilt philosophy. I fully understand that I press my seams to one side, and I do that because I think it strengthens the quilt. However, other people press their seams open because it helps the quilt to lie flatter. So I understand that just because people are doing it differently doesn't mean that one way is right and one way is wrong. But I feel like I'm internalizing that a little bit more now than I used to versus just saying, you should press your seams any way you wanna press your seams. Now I can really start to feel like you really can press your seams any way you want to press your seams. But that's just a very small example. I'm kind of talking more about a bigger picture and it's all of these little elements that add up to what your big quilt philosophy is. The big one for me right now, I think, is having quilts that are not cookie cutter quilts in that they're as unique as humanly possible. For me personally, that means getting away from using a pattern. It doesn't mean that I won't use a pattern. I, I have used, I've never made a full quilt out of a pattern from start to finish. I have used pieces of patterns to kind of make my own quilt. I don't love the idea of making a quilt from a pattern, but in reading some of these books and looking at, at the history of quilting and how people have used patterns in the past, it's given me a, a better appreciation of other people using patterns. I feel that in the past I felt a little bit like you can use patterns if that's what brings you joy and quilt kits kind of make me cringe a little bit. It does to me feel like paint by numbers with quilts. You're getting the fabric picked out for you, oftentimes in the quilt kits the fabric is already cut, and you're literally following the instructions like a paint by number to create this quilt. Now, in saying that out loud, I feel judgy about it. So I would say the quilt kits are the one thing that I do still feel a little bit like, if you wanna make a quilt kit, that's totally fine. Just like if you wanna go do a paint by numbers and hang it on your wall, great. But you're not really creating art, and I know that people I, are, going to really dislike that I say that because quilt kits are really popular. And I would even be excited to receive a quilt kit as a gift. I would just open the quilt kit and I would use the the contents of the kit for all kinds of things. I might use the pat pieces of the pattern in one project. I might use the cutout pieces to do, you know, an improv 
piece, but in my quilt philosophy, I can't imagine going out and buying a quilt kit and completing it. It's just not part of what brings me joy. But if it brings you joy, that's great. I used to be a dancer and I never loved the idea of the rock cats, the cookie cutter dancers where everybody is exactly the same height. They're supposed to actually have the same size head. I don't know if you do that, but I was told that I would be a good rock cat because I had the correct size head. Um, so they're the same height, the same head. They're all kicking exactly at the same you know, height and distance. And to me, that's not interesting. There's nothing interesting about a bunch of people doing exactly the same thing in exactly the same way and looking the same. So I don't wanna make cookie cutter quilts. I don't want my quilt to look exactly like somebody else's quilt. I don't really remember why I brought out these books. <laughs> I think, because, oh, because they were helping to clarify my quilt philosophy for myself, which I think is important. So I'll just take a minute. This one is, Fabric of a Nation. This is a quilt exhibit at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. This is a exhibit that is going on right now that I would love to go see, but it's just a little too far for me. Um, but this this is great. It has amazing quilts. It goes, you know, all the way from, you know, quilts around the 17th, you know, the late 1600s all the way to you know more modern quilts uh, so this this is great and it talks extensively about each quilt the second one is an older book I think was this made around the 60s I'll have to look um, it's the pieced quilt this was a really famous book when it came out my copy is actually a signed a signed copy it's pretty cool um, so this was by Jonathan Hallstein and when did it come out? This came out, I think in the 70s. 1973. Um, but this was a really famous book at the time that it came out. And I'm kind of going through it and just getting all kinds of bits of information and inspiration. And again, it has like, you know, really great color photos and then just a little bit of information underneath the color photos. This is different, whereas the Quilt of a Nation book has a lot more you know information about each quilt this one just has a little bit of information but it has really really but it's really great the last one is american quilts the democratic art 1870 to 2007 by robert shaw and this is just a wealth of knowledge there's great visuals um but it's also just a ton of information so I really recommend those three books if you're looking to find out about quilt history find out how quilts are connected what people's lives were like who are making these quilts find inspiration all kinds of things like that your quilt philosophy may include something about upcycled material or where you get your material from or what types of material you use. For me, that's not as important to me. I have used upcycled material, I use new material, I use material from box stores and uh, quilt shops and wool, flannel, cotton. Uh, I have an upcoming quilt uh, that's going to be in denim. I've wanted to use corduroy. So that, that doesn't matter to me so much. What also does not matter to me so much is to define whether my quilting style is traditional or modern. I feel like this is a, a question that famous quilters get asked all the time. I've been watching a lot of interviews with famous quilters and, you know, reading interviews with them and things like that. And I feel like every time they're asked, does, does your aesthetic tend to be more towards traditional or modern and they typically have a pretty solid answer in that. I don't feel that I need to define my quilting style as one or the other. I really love um, recreation fabrics. I love looking at old patterns from way back in the day and taking some of those for inspiration or even trying to replicate some of those quilt blocks into my own quilts. But then I also love improv quilting, which is a lot more modern. I've started to use some solids, though I struggle with that. Uh, and solids are frequently you know, used in more modern quilts. The, the other thing I wanna say about modern quilts, quilt art, quilt philosophy, is that something has really been aggravating me that I've been hearing a lot of 
you know, well-known quilters say, which is this idea of the definition of an art quilt is a quilt that can be hung on the wall. So, you know, more of a utilitarian quilt would be one that you have on your bed. That can also be very beautiful. Um, but that an art quilt is one on the wall. And I don't quite understand why you can't snuggle up with an art quilt on the bed or on the couch. And I don't think that that's what they mean. I don't think they're like, if it's an art quilt, it has to be on the wall. But to define it as something on the wall, I really would love to make art quilts, but I can't imagine them being hung on a wall. I really want to be able to fully embody them on myself, to feel the fabrics on my body, to feel the weight of the quilt. And to me, putting it on a wall feels very stark. So to define an art quilt as something that would be on the wall feels wrong to me. So that is also part of my quilt philosophy. I want my quilts to be very artistic and I want them to be utilitarian. I have a lot more to say about the quilt philosophy. I feel like I'm just kind of scratching the surface here. I would love to know what you consider to be part of your quilt philosophy. Um, I would love for you to comment. I'd love to hear about it. Speaking of comments, so I'd like to talk a little bit about the channel here. Um, the two th I have two things about the, the channel. One is the name of the channel, uh, which is mostly quilts, and two are the comments. So it used to be, um, prior to my last video, I responded to every single comment because I didn't really get all that many and it wasn't very time consuming. I'm still not getting very many, so it's not any more time consuming now. But I felt, and I still do feel, that if somebody comments on a video, they're kind of sending a message to me and it just feels to me like I should respond and I want to respond. Like these are people who are engaging with me about my videos and I want to engage back. Like that's the whole point. Otherwise, what's the point? What's the purpose, right? Um, and so after my last video published, I just got really busy with the holidays and I wasn't replying back. And then I would suddenly have a couple minutes to reply back, but I'd be like, oh my gosh, you know, I have like a month's worth. I can't only reply to a couple people and not everybody because then it would look, you know, rude for me to reply to some people and not other people. And I started overthinking it. This is one thing about myself is I'm an overthinker. And so I start to overthink it and then I didn't reply to anybody. So now I have a tremendous amount of guilt that I have re not replied to anybody. <laughs> and I feel like now I can't start replying to anybody because I have so many people. So this is what I'm gonna say. I do want to reply to everybody's comment. Um, and it, I'm just going to reply to the ones that I see come in and can do in that moment. And if I miss some, um, that that's okay. That, that it'll be all right. But I, I do, in theory, want to reply to everybody because, you know, that's, that's the deal. Uh, second thing about the channel is the name of my channel. I kind of am hating <laughs> the name of my channel and at this point it's actually not an easy fix. Um, once you have a thousand subscribers, not a thousand, yeah, once you have a thousand subscribers, you have to apply to have your name changed. So, I would have to apply and I don't even have a better name but this is how I'm feeling about mostly quilts so when I started the channel I wanted to do a lot of quilt related things but also do things like bags and ornaments and other stuff which I have been doing but mostly quilts to me feels like if I if I stumbled across a channel that was mostly quilts I'd be like why not all quilts quilts are the best why would you want to do anything but make quilts and I feel like if I took out the mostly part I could still do other things like ornaments and bags no one would be like oh your channel is supposed to be all quilts you know what, what are you doing doing something else I really don't like the mostly part of the mostly quilts but I don't know I mean I really want to be like all in quilts if that's a ridiculous name I wouldn't use that but something like like that right so but I've kind of already started this whole mostly quilt thing. The people that know my channel know me as mostly quilt. So, you know, it's like a whole branding thing. But uh, I don't know. Let me know what you think. If, if you think it would be, uh, actually, I don't really care. It's just something I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about changing the name of the channel. So we'll see. If, if the channel name changes, and I literally have zero ideas. I can't even present like three choices for you to tell me what you think because I don't even have another idea. But... If the name changes and you're like, wait a minute, is this still the same channel? It is the same channel, but it has a new name. <clears throat> finally, not finally, we have a couple more things. I wanna, sh I wanna show you the projects that I made and I wanna talk about some upcoming projects that we can do together. So the quilts, uh, there's two quilts. I, I made a ton of stuff 
and I'm not going to show it to you all, but there's two things I wanted to show you. One is the status of the mystery quilt, which I had so much fun with. It's a free quilt along on the channel, um, the Warped Spinster, and it came out great. I'm always a little weary of these mystery quilts because I'm like, am I going to really like this quilt when it's done? And this is the first mystery quilt along that I did. And it was great. Now I did get to the end where I had all my blocks and I kind of turned some, I flipped them so that this quilt is not exactly like the warped spinster quilt, but I really do love it. So, and I used my piece, my leftover pieces from the front on the back. And so I think that the back is almost as good as the front. So let me show you now a picture of the front. It's a really big quilt. It's actually the biggest quilt I've ever made. I didn't take the exact measurements, but I could hardly fit it in the picture. Um, so let me show you the back. Here's the back. I gave it away as a present to our dear family friends who've known forever and we get together with them every Christmas Eve and have a really nice dinner and they're always super generous with their gifts and I wasn't exactly sure if it's, it's this couple who are both photographers and so I thought all of the little squares looked like little like Polaroid pictures and so that's partly why I thought of them with this quilt but I wasn't totally sure about their aesthetic like I've never been to their home so I don't really know what it's it's kind of a modern piece and this is a couple that's like my parents age um so they're a little bit older and I was like I don't know if, what they're gonna think but they loved it and they sent me a picture of it in their house which I would show you but I was like I don't know if they want me to show on the internet a picture of their home so so I'm not I'm not gonna show it but they they sent me a picture of it on their couch it looks so good they just were so thankful and they they absolutely loved it so the other project I finished was a, a project that I started at this retreat this crafting retreat and I took this improv quilting class at the retreat and so I started with just these couple quilt blocks and then I just started to build and build and build and what I love about this quilt is that I made it like improv-y so it's all over the place but then it also has some more traditional blocks like it'll have half square triangles kind of at like a diagonal and then it'll have like diamonds in a square but then it's kind of mixed in with all this craziness so many different um patterned fabrics I used probably like over 20 different types of fabric. Uh, so let me show it to you. I, I gave this one to my mom and this one is even a little bigger than the mystery quilt. So this is actually officially the biggest quilt I ever made and she really loved it. So here, here's a picture of that quilt. I was going so fast on this quilt and when I when I see this quilt I really do love it but artistically speaking I'll say that there is a problem in it and that is that there's really no spot for your eye to rest to, to kind of give your eyes a break it's like wild and crazy and I think that it came out that way because that what was that's what was happening in the creation of it it was wild and crazy I wasn't taking like a breath to step back and you know, analyze and, and give it some, some room to breathe. I was just go, 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 go. And so the quilt is very like, go, 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 go. So in that sense, I kind of like it. It kind of um, mirrors the, the process in a sense. So those are the two, the two pieces I wanted to talk about. What I'm making now, which I'm not doing a video of, I'm kind of just doing it in the evenings, relaxing as I'm making a, um, some Christmas blocks, which yes, it's January. Part of the problem with my quilt philosophy, and this is another part of my quilt philosophy, is that I don't start Christmas projects until after Thanksgiving, which there's a problem with that because by the time you get to after Thanksgiving, you're, you're not really creating Christmas related things unless they're part of a gift, you're more creating like gifts. So for example, the mystery quilt and then the, the improv quilt, neither of them were Christmas related, but I was making them for gifts. So I wasn't really doing any Christmas related projects during that time. So by the time January hits, I haven't gotten my fill of Christmas projects like other people have. Um, so I'm 
I'm kind of just putting these blocks together randomly. Um, let me show you what I made. I made this block. Oops. This is stuck. I was thinking about putting these ribbons like, like around there like this, but I felt like it was a little bit much, but I could still do that. Oh, it's still stuck to that. I could still do that if I wanted to, but this is the wreath here. And I just, the background is flannel. It kind of looks like a barn door to me. It's like hanging on the barn door. And then it's just quilting cotton for, for that. And I raw edge sewed on this and I tried to make the stitches look wild and crazy kind of to make it look, you know, like actual foliage or whatever you call it. And then I underturned the applique for the bow. So I made that. And then I made a bunch of these diamond in a square blocks. They are gingerbread men and coffee cups. So I will somehow put those together in a quilt, but I'm not really thinking about how these pieces are all going to come together. I'm more thinking about, um, What do I want to say? Just kind of making the stuff and then once I have a bunch of pieces, I can think visually about how I want them to all come together. The two projects that I'm thinking of that we can do together, let me know what you think of if you have more interest in one over the other. I used to have a series, you can go back and look, maybe I'll link, it's only two videos, so maybe I'll link to those videos below. Um, but it was a National Day Craft Challenge, which I think is just too complicated. But the idea was every single day um, in the United States, there's like multiple national days. So National Rain Day, National Hot Cocoa Day, National Sneaker Day, right? And there's probably about four to five days or four to five holidays per day. And then I would pick one of those four or five to do a craft around. So for example, one of the videos, which was kind of funny, was um, National Shower with a Friend Day. Um, and so I had to do a craft around National Shower with a Friend Day. And then I think the other one I did was National Oregon Day, which was really great because then I had to like look up all these information about Oregon to get inspiration because I was like, what am I gonna do National Oregon Day? So I kind of wanted to bring that back, but in a different way. I wanted to make a quilt of like each block being a national day. But like for, exa for example, before with the National Oregon Day, I ended up making like a little stuffed beaver. So instead of doing like um, crafty projects, I would be having a quilt block for each day, which again brings me back to my quilt philosophy in that a lot of these older quilts that I'm looking at, they taught, they, they speak to, the quilts speak to what was going on in that time in the United States. You can get little snippets of information about what people's lives like were, were like back then, especially with some of these applique quilts with images of animals and people and things like that. And so having this opportunity to, to take these national days, I am hoping it will provide kind of, in, in when it's done, it will provide kind of an image of what life for us all is like right now. My block, like if it's National Fruit Day, my fruit block would look different than your fruit block, but we would be, you know, making fruit blocks together, which would be really cool. The other series I'm thinking about doing. So that would be that would be one series I'm thinking. The other series I'm thinking about doing is kind of a structured improv series which makes me like roll my eyes at myself a little bit because when I I watch a lot of YouTube quilt channels out there and when I see other people doing the um the improv quilting I always just scroll by I'm like no I'm not really interested in watching that. But I do think it would be kind of cool to have a structured block a week or a month or whatever it ends up being where we're all kind of following the same directions but it will end up looking different so that is what i wanted to talk to you all about thank you so much for watching i will do my best to reply to all of your comments i really appreciate your engagement with my channel and i'll see you next time bye